Good morning. I wanted to continue my discussion, or shall I say, description of the stage three appliance. I introduced that to you in the last session with Adam, but it's necessary that you can understand how it works and how it needs to be adjusted. It's also helpful for the, for the patient to understand the philosophy behind it. Essentially, it teaches young children and adults to uh, keep their mouth closed, preferably with their tongue on their palate, but crucially, subconsciously, all night. Now, many people find it difficult to change their sub subconscious posture overnight, but that is what the stage three does. I think i best to show you a picture so that you can understand the objective of the appliance. Um, as you can see, um, we have altered the design slightly. Um, it clips into the upper jaw with on the usually either the first, second, uh, deciduous molars or the first permanent molars. Here it is fitted on the first permanent molars with the rest on the sevens. Below it are two extensions which are the anterior and posterior lock. This current version does not have a palatal bar joining the two halves across the palate. There is a lingual bar which joins it in two millimeter wire just behind the incisors. This is an important change and gives room for the tongue on the palate. Now the two um, locks, the anterior and posterior lock, um, extend below the appliance and touch the tissue on each side as you can see here. The anterior lock touches the gum just beside the apex of the second deciduous uh, molars, uh, the first, sorry, deciduous molars, or the, the first deciduous premolars. It should be about varying on age between um, 9 and 13 millimeters below this, the gingival margin. Um, it essentially is meant to touch if you drop your jaw to remind you. The posterior locks touch the retromolar pad just behind the molar, last molar tooth on each side. You can see in the picture here. The child should have to push their jaw a long way forward in order to get round this so that they can then, um, uh, each time they open and close, have to push forward and back. Um, this is what engages the anterior lock. Um, these uh, um, locks need adjusting, although hopefully they will arise from the uh, laboratory more or less correct. The, uh, you should just clip it into the upper jaw and then uh, encourage the child to push their jaw all the way forward around the posterior lock um, then close their mouth by closing their teeth and sliding back. At that point, the locks should barely touch, but if you drop the jaw, the anterior lock will touch, and if you drop more than a millimetre or two, it should be uncomfortable. Now, the locks themselves should arrive correct, but may need adjusting. Um, the, uh, it is important that there is an open bite because if the child is going to close their mouth and then slide back with their teeth together, the incisors mustn't interfere. You can see the path of closure here.
and you need to adjust the locks so that they touch when the child slides back, as I show there. Um, the anterior lock, um, as I say, should arrive correctly adjusted, but if you need to adjust it, just add a small blob of soft, uh, freshly mixed acrylic resin, dip it in hot water, add it to the two locks, put it in the mouth and get the child to push all the way forward, then all the way back and close their mouth. Now this should mean that the tissues just touch on the locks. And um, if you need to adjust them, you'll then need to grind the lock away, as I show you there. But it is important to leave the lower margin touching so that that acts as a kind of undercut. Now, the child will need to wear that um, all day to start with and they will need to keep their mouth shut in order to do that. So it is important to introduce them to it in stages. Just ask them to wear it, say, for 10 minutes or 20 minutes to start with, gradually increasing the length that they're worn until they can wear it all day, except, of course, for eating meals. Do not, at this point, try and get them to wear it at night. Wait until they can wear it all day without any tendency to sore places at all. If they develop a sore place, try to avoid grinding the tissue away. It is better to wear the two spare appliances um, for a few days while the sore place heals and then go back to wearing it. That is a better method than trying to ease the locks so they don't touch. Once they can wear it all day, then you should try wearing it all night, still maintaining the close locks so that they cannot drop their jaw. Initially, just ask them to wear it for half an hour, then wake them up and change the appliances over. But gradually increase the period of time, and you'll find that after about, uh, well, it can be as long as several months, the child will learn to keep their mouth closed subconsciously all night, every night. That is when you are changing their subconscious posture, and it is a crucial point you must achieve. Now, if you are able to persuade the child to wear this for about 20 hours a day, that is virtually all day and all night except for meals, the lower jaw and indeed the whole face will progressively grow forward at about um, between one and two millimeters a month. Orthodontists are often amazed at this because, of course, they do not think it is possible to move um, the mandible more than maybe one or two millimeters um, in all. But yes, the stage three will move the large or forward long distances, and indeed it does so quite quickly. You will find that um, um, this young girl was within six months. The whole shape of her face has changed. Both you can see the maxilla and the mandible. This is just from wearing the stage three appliance. Um, it will take the jaw quite long distances. You can uh, um, initially need to adjust it so that it touches quite tightly. This is how to adjust the anterior law. Get the patient to put the appliance in, close their mouth by pushing their jaw right forward, then sliding their jaw back and keeping their teeth together. You then push your thumbs against the lower jaw, holding it back. 
warn the patient not to open their jaw, um, but drop it yourself one millimeter, no more. They may then feel it touch slightly. Tell them not to open any further. And uh, um, it should then be correctly adjusted. A good technician will um, provide you with the appliance in this position, but you may need to adjust the acrylic yourself, as I showed you how. Now, um, the posterior log is tested in a slightly different way. Put your finger between the upper and lower teeth, as I show here, get the patient to push their jaw right forward, then very gently close on your finger and slide the jaw back, still touching your finger, until it just touches on the retromolar pad at the back. Um, this distance should be about five millimeters back preferably only three, but the important thing is that the child must push their jaw right forward, close, then slide all the way back until they touch the retromolar pad. Now with the mouth closed, the retromolar pad will drop below the tongue um, in the, the side of the throat and will really pay no further part in the treatment. But it is important that you use it to make sure the child pushes their jaw forward. The process of the anterior and posterior log will encourage forward growth at about the rate of one or two millimeters a month. And this actually happens quite quickly. Within a relatively short period, you'll find that the uh, lower jaw has come forward oh, many millimetres. This is a young girl, and her lower jaw came forward over 25 millimetres. Orthodontists are amazed with this because they do not believe it possible. But um, it is essential that the locks are correctly adjusted and that the child wears the appliance preferably about 20 hours a day. Um, that's mostly, of course, during the day, but the rest of the time at night. Um, these are important time periods and you will not achieve a result unless the child wears their plans at least 16 hours, preferably 18 to 20. Some children will wear them 22, even 23 hours. I don't know how they manage it. But the final result is just so superior that um, you can see here, this is a child 20 years after treatment and her teeth are still completely straight despite the fact that she had a very big overjet with um, very irregular teeth. The answer is simply they need to have good locks and wear it enough. Now, I think that orthotropics will eventually take over from orthodontics. I think that um, in the days to come, um, all orthodontics will give way to orthotropics. The main advantage being that you can take the jaw forward so far that they will never have problems with their temporomandibular joints or problems with sleep apnea, which many adults have because their face has not grown forward far enough. So I hope that you understand what I am describing here, and I wish you every success when using the appliances. Best of luck.